Two percent. You Swiss culture? Yeah. That's you? Yeah. I knew I wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, everybody, we didn't have all the special mix in that place. You know, Christian, and Sweet Patrick, all of that goes. You guys would have landed, what, after 6 p.m. turn in We probably would have landed at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Coach, can you talk a little bit about the craziness of this new for this new playoff format? I mean, I think it's great for the fans, you know, and it's you know it puts a lot of pressure on you to come out and perform. And as you saw, our game was hotly contested. Um, look at Chicago, Toronto, a lot of the games, you know, Oklahoma City, New Orleans. Like, it's awesome for the fans. But, got to go out and take care of your business. I'm happy, you know, being a fan first, all the way back to 79, 80. I think uh, it's something new, obviously, but it brings a little bit of an NCAA tournament feel. And, you know, some, some teams are in that position where you got to win or go home. And it makes for an exciting, exciting ball game. So I think overall, if it's good for the fans, it's good for the league, obviously. If you can just, uh, Memphis is 20 seconds half court scoring. Like, it's huge, man, because it's, you know, Jai gets a lot of that attention, but it's all of them. They got multiple guys that can start to break with a couple, three dribbles. And some of the guys can take it all away, uh, but transition defense is going to be a huge key, you know, defensively. Uh, striving. I think Jai's 27 points in the third quarter. Uh, how much can you glean from that in your film study? And, and what's like the biggest message that you to be able to? Man, just to, you know, not, it's just make Josh few bites, you know what I mean, without giving up two bites, just try to, you know, that's any NBA game for that matter right now, with the stakes being even higher, what he likes to do, looking at back and down here, we just constantly the force. Um, we, we are, we're gonna have our hands where our job has to be to not let them get inside of our game. So, that's a huge, huge part of transition D, and then again, being great on the ball, having guys shifted behind them. Individual defender, that's the guard. Did you get into the ball now? Is that And even though it will be a lot of it. You guys have had a lot of success. You guys have been a big part of what you guys have. I suspect in the playoffs, you'd expect physicality to go up. Talk to your team about that. How are you guys going to mitigate? I mean, I've yeah, talked. Maybe, I talked to maybe getting you know, three or four, two or four points per game. You know, it's it's we used to have the saying in Milwaukee. You know, don't ask, don't beg, don't expect anything. And uh, they have they have a job to do, and we have to do our job. In spite of what we may disagree with, what's was blown or not blown, uh, we have a job to do. So that's been my message to my team this entire season. Uh, and, and also on the flip side of that, the method is also been not selling, you know, to try to win the people mind. So I think the duality of those messages, you know, they fit hand in hand because now it's like the onus is on us to go make the play. And if we're soft or we're trying to get a bailout or whatever, then that in turn affects our people because we're complaining that stuff is great and participating on the other end. So we, we the, the, the referees, you know, we get emotional. It's an emotional game. We're passionate about you know what's happening out there, but at the end of the day, you just got to go play basketball. You got to play with force. And usually, the team that's playing the hardest usually gets a favorable position. Are you adding anything big? What you guys are doing because the playoffs now, or you guys keep expanding? We added a couple things, big team. Such as? <laughs> Such as things that I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> How did they receive those? It's great. It's great, man. We have full participation, full compliance. It's beautiful. Uh, for me, I'm super excited. You know, this is the best time of the year. As an athlete, as a competitor, and, uh, you know, coming from where we come from, and now making the playoffs and you know being able to play on the biggest stage and you know uh, you know it's an exciting time here. Garvin said as a group you're gonna have to throw a body in front of the Rob Moran. What's the challenge and what does he really bring to the table? Um for us the challenge really is just you know showing him a crowd, showing him bodies. You know, uh, you know he's a big transition and uh, getting downhill. So for us it's just packing the paint, showing him bodies and uh Showing him different schemes too. At this point in his career, he's kind of seen that with you know, uh, all different coverages. So just try to be versatile with the coverages, showing him different looks, and uh, being physical with him, and, you know, throwing bodies at him.
with Darvin and expands the playbook a little bit, you know, added in wrinkles that you guys can show to a team that you know, <coughs> Was that a process that you had to learn from like when you were here the first time sure. to now? Sure. Um, when I first was here, there was not really any answers for being treated like that or being out the rotation, in the rotation, starting shooting off the point guard. I never had any answer for it, um, but I didn't know what questions to ask to get an answer for it either. I kind of just thought it was normal. And uh, the older I got, the more experience I, I received, I noticed that um, it's a lot of times the coach's decision on how you play. You um, have been pretty honest about the continuity and, and how this team is not there where it could be and it would eventually be. Me or ADs or the team? Just, just the team in general, too. Like, I mean, but you were on a few ADs as well. 
when you guys look back a little bit at it and sort of saw those turnovers, were those turnovers of continuity or did you view them more as turnovers of just as often? I, I didn't look back on it, so I don't even remember. It, did honest. you guys not do that as a team at all, like any Minnesota or was it mostly? I don't practice? think it was turnovers, I think it was more or less like kind of did to, in the preparation of the game, defensive coverage, offensive execution, things like that, all that time, which was really the focus. Even looking back on it, I ain't even turned, I ain't even talking about it. Obviously, the way we got it. So, these, you know, standings, that kind of seating, so you guys are the underdogs. Uh, do you feel like you're going up against a, a favorite? Or how do you do the kind of the competitive scale? How do you, I don't even Honestly, think like that. I mean, you just can't control the questions of the crowd. The beauty of the sport takes over. That's the preparation, the making shots, the injury, it's like all that matters. It takes it takes it uh, takes us all own part in, in, into your success as a team. So just being prepared for those moments, I think, uh, allows you to lock in and look up. Dilo, you talk about Dilo, how's it been for you? You talk about the preparation. I mean, last three games of the season, you averaged 18 points, shot 52%. You Swiss culture? Yeah. That's you? Yeah. I knew I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You averaged 18.7, you shot 52% from the field. And then even though last game you shoot the ball the best, you sure had eight assists. So how has it been with you, like, learning different, you know, ways of going about each game? You know, you talked about the preparation. Uh, I mean, I try to show that I'm that type of player. I could have had 20 assists that night. I could have had 15 assists that night. I'm not making shots. I can still control the game. So I'm making shots. Game probably over. So... Just, just knowing that I'm that type of player, not losing any confidence, whether the coach doesn't decide to go with me or if he does, just knowing that I'm that type of player. No, no. Do you have a personal feel for getting into town as early as Sunday's game? What do you mean? Like, well, you guys are leaving today. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you know you don't arrive until the day before. Oh, do you, does that matter to you at all? I mean, I think it's great. I think just to get there early, get situated, and acclimated. There for like six or seven days, or I'm like a hotel room for like my apartment, uh, cameras, and, um, blankets, and things like that. So to get a day to, to kind of make my apartment home, hotel home, that feel, I think that's a good thing. Okay, so now I want to know what the cream is. Because he's carrying a lot. Just essentials, you know? Like, I like the, the, my own body wash. Yeah, just just things that I know that um, I might not have access to not being at home. Thanks, Angel. Yeah, appreciate that. The guard multiple positions, get big strong rebounds, physical rebounds, attacks at the rim, he has a good mid-range game, capable three-point shooter, uh, and athletic, and just his energy. And the force in which he's played with here lately, it's, it's, it's been beautiful, beautiful thing. Big asset for our, our ball club. Did anything change after he got DNC uh, today? No, no, I just told him, man, we just got to keep working through it. And um, that one was on me. But uh, as you can see, he's been in the thick of the mix with us ever since. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mark and Andrew have been playing as hard as we can. How important is this transition? Series. No, major. I mean, they, they get out run. Uh, first unit, uh, get to the rim. Uh, the second unit, they, they shoot a lot of threes. But, you know, anytime you got the ball on the court, you know, with his explosive disc and his athletic ability, you know, he can get from one end to the other really quick. So, you know, it's just get back, load up, and, you know, try to stop the ball.